No women should be putting other women down with jokes. No women should be passing comments about other women. Allah separated the two. Even though when you say no group should make fun of any other group, it covers everyone, men and women. But He separated it on purpose. Now why separate it? Because apparently the way women make fun of each other is very different from the way men make fun of each other. And each of them can each actually very easily justify that they're not doing anything bad. I can give you lots of examples from my home because I have four daughters. And they make fun of each other in ways that are very creative. I, I, I as a guy would never think of it. Oh, you're wearing pink today? That's all she says, you're wearing pink today? And the other one is offended. Mama, she's making fun of me. I didn't say anything, I just said she's wearing pink. Yeah, but the way you said it, and the way you looked at her, and your intonations, and the <laughs> at the end, all of that is part of Sukhriya. Oh, you think that matches? Oh, okay. Well, guys don't do that. <laughs> no, I don't think it matches and that's why I'm wearing it. You know, that's, for guys it's different. But for girls it's different. So Allah separated it. Allah made it a separate issue. And everybody, you know, people use language that when you come after them, say, no, 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 I didn't say anything. What are you talking about? I was just commenting on the color. I was just commenting, hey, did you get that at Walmart? I was just curious. I wasn't making fun of the fact that you're cheap or you buy cheap. I was just saying, I'm curious, where did you buy the product from? You want to justify it to anybody else? You could. You can't justify it to Allah. But now, just give you an example closer to home. I come from Pakistan, that's my home country. And there, in many parts of the Muslim world, you can go to a fancy restaurant. Ironically, a fancy restaurant in Lahore is McDonald's. But anyway, so you go to a fancy restaurant, and you're going sitting there, you got you dressed up super nice to eat your, you know, whatever sandwich. And you're sitting there, and then some family, some, some cab, taxi driver's family, or some security guard's family, some chokidar's family comes into the restaurant. And they sit right next to you. Now you're dressed all nicely and your family's dressed all nicely and you've got your SUV outside and all this stuff and these guys came on bicycles and they're sitting next to you speaking loud. They're really excited to be in this restaurant for the first time. Their dad saved up for a few months so he can get, take them on a treat. And the family that's sitting there, the posh family that's sitting there is getting uncomfortable. And they're looking at them like, why are they here? What kind of people do they let in this place? Ugh. Even if they don't say a word, their face, Sukhriya, your face. This is the religion of Muhammad where everybody's treated equally. You can't even look at another Muslim equally. What are you talking about non-Muslims? You can't even look at another Muslim. And this is a fundamental teaching of our deen. Fundamental. All human beings are equal. They're all children of Adam Something's wrong in your, in your, not only your thinking, your belief, if you can think of someone as inferior. There's something seriously wrong with your Iman. Don't let women make fun of other women. They may be better than them. Better than them how? The girl says, what do you mean better? Look at her clothes. Look at the neighborhood she lives in. Look at the car this guy drives. He's better than me? None of that makes you better than anyone. The only thing that makes you better is what's inside, what's invisible. And that's only visible to Allah. So you may be making fun of a friend of Allah. And when someone makes fun of a friend of Allah, they become enemies to Allah. So be careful, just be careful. You know, I, I, not too long ago, I met a brother. He came up to me, he wanted to take Shahada. Uh, you know, he's, he's in the Midwest somewhere in Ohio. And he told me that he's been a you know, white guy, he's been a bartender for his whole life. And I don't know how he found one of my videos or something on YouTube. And he starts watching a bunch of them. And he went through the entire Juz Amma Tafsir that I've done podcasts, which is complicated, but he went through the whole thing, sitting in the bar. Just plug in in the ear and he's pouring drinks for his friends. Six months. Took Shahada. On his own. No Muslim around him. Actually, he did tell me he has some Muslim friends, regulars at the bar. You know, he asked them a few questions about Islam. So he takes Shahada and he says, you know, I'm, I'm ready to leave this life. I haven't had a drink. A bartender hasn't had a drink for six months. Hasn't had a drink. When you look at him, you're not going to know this guy has taqwa. But I can guarantee you, that man has more taqwa than most of us. The situation he's in, and the way he holds himself back, and then he finally quit. No savings, no nothing, he quit. I can't do it anymore. I can't go back. Even the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu were not given the, the, the ayat to quit alcohol right away. 
They were told the harm and the sin is greater than the benefit. Then they were told at least don't be drunk when you're about to pray. Then years later they were told leave it all together. Allah did not reveal one time, leave alcohol. And this man left alcohol on his own once he heard about Islam. Subhanallah. That's taqwa. But when you look at him, you wouldn't know. You had, you'd have no idea. Don't put people down. Don't think of them as less than you. They may be way better than you are. إلهي يا متعب